first week of the year is officially done and dusted. Have you stuck to your resolution so far? Or have you already fallen off? The harsh reality is 90% of you guys watching this video are not gonna stick to your New Year's resolutions. A few of you though, less than 10%, will actually follow through for the whole year. There are a few reasons for this. One is how strong you are. I don't mean physically, I mean mentally. This is the truth and the truth is harsh. Mental strength, much like physical strength, is only seen, noticed and appreciated when compared to the weakness of others. Likewise, your achievements are only noticed, seen and celebrated because they're compared to the lack of achievement of others. If everybody had a six pack, it wouldn't be special to have a six pack. If everyone got into Harvard University, it wouldn't be special to get into Harvard University. If everybody earned a million dollars a year, it wouldn't be special to earn a million dollars a year. This is the reality of life. It's hyper competitive and for good reason. But without going too far off topic like I often do, let's talk about the other reason you might not achieve your goals. And that is the goals themselves. And I think that half the battle in achieving your goals is setting the right ones. What is the right goal? The right goal is that which takes you closer to becoming your ideal future self. Who do you want to be in the future? What do you want to have that's material and tangible? What do you want to have that's internal and intangible? How do you want others to perceive you? How do you want to behave? What kind of routine do you want to have? What kind of life do you want to have? All of these questions should help you determine what your goals should be. Now, if this is all too complicated, I'll break it down even simpler. Human beings generally want to succeed in three areas of life, health, wealth, and relationships. Some people, when they talk about these things, include a fourth pillar of human desire, which is happiness. But I think that if you succeed in the first three pillars, health, wealth, and relationships, then the happiness is really a given. And if it's not, then you might be faltering in one of the first three areas. So for each of these areas, I want you guys to pick one goal for your health, one goal for your wealth, and a third goal for your relationships. Now for these goals, they can be objective. For example, if it's health, you could say, I wanna lose 10 kilograms. A subjective goal would be, I want to get in better shape. Personally, I prefer objective goals because they're easy to measure and when you hit those targets you get that subjective feeling of happiness anyway and for a wealth goal objectively you could say I want to have one month this year where I make ten thousand dollars for a relationships goal if you're already in a relationship you can say I want to go on x amount of dates with my partner or if you're not in a relationship you can say I want to go on x amount of dates per month with new girls and so as you can see it's pretty easy to break these goals down what I want you guys to do is to break them down even further into tasks that you can either Either complete weekly or daily. For example, if you want to lose 10 kilograms this year, you can say, I want to track my calories and I want to run at least three or four times a week. And then within that goal, you can increase the amount of running you do or reduce the amount of calories you're eating over time, depending on where you're at. For the wealth goal, if you want to have a $10,000 month, you can say, I want to add an extra stream of income this year, or I want to increase X, Y, and Z streams of income that I already have. You could say, I want to start a business this year. You could say, I want to start a personal brand this year. You could start making content. Or if that's not really your thing, you can just say, I want to get a second job. As far as the relationships goal is concerned, you can say, I want to approach X amount of girls per week, be it one, two, three, I don't know, it depends on how much time you have and how much of a priority it is for you. But you can see how easy it is to look at your ideal future self, who you want to become in the future, and then break that down into the areas of human desire, which is health, wealth, and relationships, and then make specific goals in those three areas, and then break them down further into tasks you can complete daily or weekly and even monthly. And when you break them down into those daily, weekly, and monthly tasks, then things start to take shape. And when things start to take shape, you get even more motivated. And then suddenly your ideal future self, this future you that you've designed in your head actually starts to become achievable. Now you don't have to achieve every single goal in the next year and become your ideal future self by this time in 2025. But I think that you should at least take some significant strides towards it. And for some of you, depending on your starting point, it might be easy to just start a goal for completing the task itself rather than the end result. What do I mean by that? Instead of saying, I want to gain or lose 10 kilograms this year, you can say, I just want to start going to the gym three times per week. And that can be the goal right there. You don't have to win a bodybuilding contest or be on the cover of a magazine or get to 7% body fat. The fact that you're going to the gym is the goal. And then naturally, looking better, becoming more attractive, being fitter, being more muscular, that will take shape on its own. And this, I think, is one thing where everybody, myself included, has faltered when it comes to sticking with their New Year's resolution. Everybody gets hung up on the magical end result, but they don't don't pay enough attention to the one factor that determines whether or not they actually get there. And that is 
consistency. I'm willing to bet that if you do the world's worst workout program three or four times per week consistently for a year, you will look better than someone who does the world's best workout program once a month. As far as your wealth goals might be concerned, you might be lacking consistency in how well you stick to your budget or how much effort you put towards increasing your income on a regular basis. One aspect of consistency that might help you increase your income is to spend time practicing a high value skill, something you can get employed for or something you can start a business with. This could be anything from content creation to video editing to website design to software as a service. There are so many things you can do nowadays. It's 2024. The internet really gives us unlimited opportunities. One other thing you could do which can help you increase your income and I want to credit Denmo the YouTuber for mentioning this. You can aim to simply spend more time associating with people who earn more money than you because naturally if you're around those people and they talk about money because they're good at earning money and then you can learn from their experience and get a head start on where you would have been if you hadn't met them in the first place. So simply by associating yourself with different groups of people, some of their expertise can rub off on you and help you achieve your goals. And while we're on the topic, meeting or speaking with someone who is a little bit further ahead than you in a field that you're interested in is actually one of the most underrated hacks because if you want to have something, chances are there's someone out there who already has it. If you want to do something, chances are there's someone out there who's already done it. And if you can find these people and talk to them, the chances are you'll learn something. This is such an unfair advantage because not only are you going off of your own knowledge and your own experiences, but you're leveraging the experience of someone who is further ahead than you. This could make your progress a lot quicker because you're skipping all the trial and error of having to make the mistakes yourself. Now, don't get me wrong. You're still going to make mistakes and you're still going to have difficulties. But if you can have someone guiding you who's already been there and done it, then it's going to make this substantially easier. But anyway, guys, without me waffling on any further, I'm going to give you a concise summary. Look at your ideal future self or look at where you want to be in a year's time. Break that down into the categories of health, wealth, and relationships, and then break that down into an individual goal for each of those three pillars. Once you have your goal in each of these three areas, health, wealth, and relationships, you can then break that down further into monthly, weekly, and even daily tasks. Do the tasks often, consistently, until you hit the required milestones, and then keep going. Speak to people who are further along the path than you, so you can leverage their experience as well as yours. One other thing I recommend, which I might make a video on, is to buy a notebook, and I mean a handwritten notebook. There's something that I really like about handwriting my to-do lists rather than having it as a Apple Notes on my phone, because I think it legitimizes it a little bit more, and there's much more satisfaction when I'm physically ticking it off. To me, that's my preference, but you guys might be a little bit different. Now, don't get me wrong. I still use Apple Notes on my phone, but I make sure that I handwrite everything first and then put it on my phone simply so I can take it with me and remind myself throughout the day what I have to do. And then when I get home, I'll open up my notebook or my diary and then physically check everything off with a pen. Anyway, guys, we've made it to the end of the video. As always, I appreciate it if you've made it this far. Follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. And by the way, guys, I get so many messages and emails from all of you. And to make it easier for you guys, if you really want my undivided attention, I've got a link now for you to book a one-on-one -on -one consult call with me. So whether you have a problem or a question or you simply want some advice, the best way to get in touch with me is to book a half an hour call using the link down below in the description. And with that, guys, the usual, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.